There are officially 100,000 of you. Maybe I should rephrase that. There aren't 100,000 clones. This isn't the Clone Wars, but there are 100,000 Physionic subscribers, of which you are likely one of them. So allow me to first say thank you. I don't know if you're one of the 75,000 subscribers that joined the Physionic train in the last eight months or one of the 25,000 that watched me crawl my way to this point over the previous nine years, but altogether the sentiment remains. I'm incredibly humbled that you have chosen to stick around. I'm certainly not everyone's cup of tea, and ever since I've let my personality out of the padlocked back room a bit more, I imagine that statement may be truer now than ever. Still, if it's because of my facepalm-worthy jokes, or for the science, or maybe a bit of both, I deeply appreciate that you have made the choice to hang out with me and learn some science. Uh, it's incredible to be part of a growing community of thought-provoking, science-minded people like you. I hope that you feel that you've gained some value over the time that you've been here, and I also hope that you feel that I'm adding a, a new flavor on how to learn our body. It's an incredible thing, our body. It really is its own ecosystem, and I'm afraid that... Even if I dedicate the entirety of who I am to learning everything about it, I will still fall short, because while some mention the eternity of the universe and others discuss the unfathomable oceans, I can't help but to be drawn to the power of our own biology, which seems almost limitless in its own unknowns. At any rate, uh, Physionic will continue to shed light on those unknowns with a strong emphasis on detailing things from the macro to the micro. I, and I hope you, are still committed to learning your body down to the subcellular level and back out again, because that's what I always had in mind for Physionic. It isn't a pop science channel, and it never will be. You know, I think back to when Physionic began back in early 2014. I was a naive 24-year-old with a seemingly unbreakable stubbornness to one day achieve this exact moment, the illustrious 100,000 mark. And just like that, like the snap of your fingers times a billion, Nine and a half years later, here we are. A naive 33-year-old with the same unbreakable stubbornness to achieve the next milestone. Actually, to demonstrate what I mean, uh, let me tell you a story. Do you have a few minutes? I guess if you're still here, the answer is yes. So a year earlier, I had graduated with my degree in psychology Yep, psychology. Also a fascinating field, but not my main interest. As a result, I graduated with little hard science background. So when I decided to shift to physiology, mind you, after I graduated with my psychology degree, if only this revelation would have sunk in a few years earlier, but you know, whatever, I digress. Uh, anyway, I was accepted for a dual major for a bachelor's degrees in exercise physiology and nutrition science with, you know, the ultimate goal of getting my PhD. So I spent the next one and a half years taking science courses just so I could apply for a graduate program. It was during this time that Physionic was born because I felt constantly unsatisfied with what I was learning in my classes. I'm sure I annoyed plenty of my professors, but I genuinely felt that I needed a faster, more comprehensive education. And I thought that the best way to do that would be to start writing articles and creating videos so that I could build a library of information and then integrate that information into my own mind. It really is pretty remarkable 
how much we can actually keep stored in our brain, especially when we teach it back to ourselves or others. Anyway, so after my classes, I would do the required work for class, and then I would stay in the library for hours every day to commit to researching, writing, recording, and editing one article and video every week from that point on. Unfortunately, <laughs> the only computer that I had that could handle the editing was almost two hours away where my parents lived, and I was anxious that it would get stolen if I had it here where I was staying. So every weekend or every other weekend, I would drive the two hours and back just so that I could stick to my schedule of recording and editing the video for the week, sometimes the next two weeks if time allowed. I think about one and a half years later, after also starting teaching and working in a lab for a year between classes, I was told I still didn't have enough science background and experience to apply for my PhD. It was suggested that I prove myself further and apply to a master's program instead. So begrudgingly, extremely begrudgingly, I did exactly that and began my master's in exercise physiology. If you've ever gone back in the remaining catalog of my old content, I made a lot of videos on exercise and nutrition during that time. And that's because I was <laughs> strapped for time. I was a student professor now teaching multiple courses a week and still doing my lab work for my thesis while taking multiple classes. But also, I was fascinated by what I was learning and thought others that might be too. So I think at that point, Physionic had grown to the grand total of about 500 subscribers after three and a half years of uploading every week. I could literally count my growth or loss of subscribers since it was less than one a day. <sighs> what a humbling memory. So two years later, I graduate a Master of Exercise Physiology, or at least the title. But keep in mind, that wasn't my goal. I didn't even attend graduation because the only thing that meant anything to me was my quest for my PhD. It was around this time that I had to think to myself if I wanted to limit myself to exercise and nutrition content on Physionic. And in the grand scheme, if I wanted to only learn about those two areas, and that's when I decided to only go for PhD positions that would teach me about all of physiology, not just exercise. I actually got rejected from one school for their physiology program because they had too many applicants. And they offered me a position as a physical therapy student, an interesting turn of events. But it wasn't difficult for me to reject the offer because, again, my interests were rooted in physiology. Beyond that, I felt I would lose significant credibility if I wanted to discuss topics like cancer, diabetes, dementia, and much more if I held a doctorate in physical therapy. I'm still glad to this day that I made the choice to reject the opportunity. It was the right decision. Moving along with our story, I accepted a position for a PhD in molecular medicine with a track in physiology, the absolute best possible landing spot for my curiosity to grow unimpeded. Unfortunately, this was also the most difficult time because I got rocked with an intellectual uppercut when I began my PhD program. I learned the meaning of being a damn fool. The amount of knowledge that I had to learn was nothing short of devastating. I spent every day from 6 a.m. to close in the library, including weekends, except a half day on Saturdays where I would devote that half day to creating the video for the week for Physionic. I don't know if uh, they're still up, but around the 2018 mark, I looked ghastly in some of my videos. Maybe I still do. 
I was drowning in stress, working seven days a week, at least 80 hours a week. I remember leaving one of my exams once and the world was just swimming in front of me. I've never been that stressed for that length of time in my life. I would not recommend it for your health. And there's your physionic tip of the day. Eventually, things abated, years moved on, progress was made, a pandemic threw us all into the arms of difficulty and despair. I guess <laughs> I'm realizing how cheery I sound right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I promise I'm getting to the punchline. And from a physionic standpoint, things grew a little more quickly. I wasn't kidding at the beginning when I mentioned that 25,000 joined throughout the past nine and a half years. If you're one of those individuals, I really can't express enough how much you meant to me. Maybe in an unhealthy way, my mood was heavily dependent on those few that joined throughout the years. If I gained two subscribers in a day, I felt like a king. And when I lost someone, I felt like a pauper. Not the best mentality, but that's the way it was. So thank you for sticking it out. Even when the video quality was, well, <laughs> uh, undesirably creative and uh, editing challenged. Let's put it that way. That brings us to the beginning of this year, 2023. <sighs> Look, I fully expected for Physionic to grow at its comfortable, low hum of a speed, steadily upwards, like the tortoise in the race. I think I had accepted that might be my journey, slow and steady, with my goal of 100,000 reached in several more years. But then, liftoff. At the end of January of this year, Physionic latched onto a rocket ship and surged into the sky. Video after video after video took off until we find ourselves here today, 75,000 people like you gave me one of the most gratifying gifts I've ever received. It's really special to share this with you. Thank you. I planned on talking about Physionics future, but I think that those are discoveries for some other time. I have an ambitious plan for how I see Physionic helping many more and in new ways. And I have new goals that I'd like for us to reach, of which I hope that you'll partake. But it might be best to simply enjoy the moment because this is really only going to happen once. One thing is for certain, though, I am still bursting at the seams with excitement about learning. And now that I'm approaching the end of my formal education, I am starving to throw myself at thousands upon thousands of topics that I hope to cover for you. So with that, if I haven't worn out my welcome yet and you haven't gotten sick of hearing it, thank you for being part of this moment. And thank you above all for being part of Physionic. See you in the next one.